Hello everyone. I've been doing a bunch of vlogs for a long time and they're taking a long time. Oops, there's a book right here. As they do. Uh, so I just wanted to make a quicker video for once that is going to be fun because it is the mid-year freak out book tag. I feel like I might have done this before or maybe I just wrote it down in my journal. Say hello to my little friend by the way. So I'm just going to get right into it. I feel like a lot of booktubers do this. It's just kind of talking about all the books that you've read so far in the year. So I have all my questions. Best book of the year so far is question number one. Uh, and this will be, this is my best book of the year so far and will be my favorite book of the year. Nothing will top this, I already know it. <laughs> it is Hellbent by Lee Bordugo. I'm actually in the middle of a reread already because this is the best book I've ever read. <laughs> um, I, I usually say Ninth House is my favorite book of all time. I literally love it so much. This is the sequel, Hellbent. I, I had all my eggs in this basket and Lee Bardugo delivered. I absolutely love this. It came out in February. So it's a, it was released this year as well. I didn't just read it this year. And I was so worried that this was going to be disappointing because I have a kind of rocky history with Lee Bardugo's sequels. But it wasn't. She came through. Um, I'm only... Now I have the same exact feelings about the first, the third book, that that's going to disappoint me, but so far so good. This was literally everything I wanted. Ninth House, if you don't know, you probably do, is about this girl named Alex Stern. She's at Yale. She gets involved with all these secret societies, and in the secret societies, she's kind of like a part of this group called Lethe that is like a protector of the secret societies. Like, like, they're basically, like, the police force of the societies, making sure they don't get up to anything really bad. And it's also about her mentor, Darlington, and a bunch of other characters that I love so much. Um, I love it. So, yeah. That's going to be the best book of the year. It's also the best sequel, which is the second question, but I will name another sequel. I have a giant pile of books I just yanked out, so let me find it. Best sequel I read this year so far is The Tyrant's Tomb by Rick Riordan. Uh, I also really love Bands of Mourning, I'm not realizing, but that's okay. We'll just talk about it right here. This is the fourth book in the Apollo, the Charles of Apollo series, which is kind of annoying. You have to read all of Percy Jackson and all of Heroes of Olympus, or you'll spoil everything. <laughs> so before you can read this series, you can't just pick this up. Unfortunately, you have to read all those. It's a lot, but they're all great, so... If it, that's your thing, the Greek mythology, you will love it. But this is basically, this series specifically is about Apollo getting trapped in a human body and his trials to save all the oracles. I love this one. I think I've loved all the ones in the series. I think the first one is still my favorite, but this is definitely my second favorite. And this one, Apollo really, ta I mean, the whole point is that Apollo is like learning to be human, but in this one, it's tackled a bit more, I guess, and he has a lot more internal monologue about feeling bad for all the shit he did as a god. And it's just, not only is it funny, but it's truly mature and introspective for a middle grade, as I feel like Rick is very good at doing. Yeah, I love this. I'm so excited to finish the series, but we'll get to that. So, some new releases I need to read. I have, I'm in a publishing house that my book is getting published in, like Country Press. And I have been a bad friend <laughs> because three of their books have come out. I feel like I'm missing one. No, I, I read that one. Okay. There's two that came out this year and one that came out in December, but I'm counting it towards this year that I'm behind on that I need to read. So it's these three. This is by Becca Westrup. It's a vampire romance. And I want to read it so bad. There's Beauty and the Beast vibes and I literally, I love it. I'm so excited. And then these two came out this year. Peachy came out in April, and this one just came out last month. Uh, Peachy is also a vampire, which is a fantasy, urban fantasy. I actually don't know that much about Peachy, which is fine. I kind of want to go in blind. And then The Blood That Binds Us is a dark romance, which I usually don't read, but Erin's my girl, so of course I'm going to read her book. So I need to, like, get my ass in gear and <laughs> read my friend's stuff. <laughs> I feel like a bad friend. Uh, anyway. So those are the new releases that I desperately need to read. I also was so anticipating That Self Same Metal by Brittany and Williams, which I don't even really know what it's about. I, I read the synopsis ages ago before it even had like a release date, I think, or a cover or something. 
and I was like, that sounds so good. And then I, I haven't picked it out. This is a library copy and it's due to library and I didn't read it. So I might renew it and just, I really, I gotta read it. It's literally a YA, it's short. The margins are big, I can do this. So I was really looking forward to this one. Uh, the fourth question is the most, in, what books I'm anticipating for the second half of the year. And my my most anticipated book was Hellbent and it already came out. That was literally the most anticipated book of my life and it came out in the first half. But I do have a few. I'm really excited about Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. Cassandra Clare's my gal. You can kind of see I have literally every single Shadowhunter book over there. And I'm so excited to read something new from her because it's getting repetitive, Cassie. It is, you need to leave the Shadowhunters behind. I know it's hard, but you gotta make the step. And then, oh my god, I'm so pumped for Percy Jackson 6. I don't know if I'll have to read, because he also just came out with the Nico um, Will book, which I need to read, but I need to finish the Trials of Apollo first, so I don't know if I'll have to read all these books and then read Percy, or if I just read it, but anyway, I literally, I'm so excited. I'm mad that they didn't make a cover that matched the other ones from my childhood, but whatever. Question five is the biggest disappointment, and I have two, unfortunately. One, I have stored away, and I don't feel like getting it because it's not worth the effort, and you're gonna come after me because it's The Stolen Air by Holly Black, which is a companion book to the Cruel Prince trilogy. And I love the Cruel Prince trilogy. I know that that series is kind of divisive, but I loved it. All three of those books are five stars. And yeah, The Stolen Air is about, it's, it's too much to explain and I don't care. I just really didn't like it. A lot of people love it. I hated, I hated the ending. The plot was so repetitive and didn't, I just, it was not an enjoyable reading experience. It was like a 280 page book or something and it took me ages to read and it was just not the vibe. I didn't like it at all. My other disappointment is City of Brass by S. A. Chakravorty. And this was still, this is like a 3.5, but it's more that I'm disappointed. I, I, I kind of looked up things that happened in the rest of the series. It's more that I'm disappointed at where it goes and that makes me not, me not want to read the rest, if that makes any sense. So that was kind of a bummer. But I still like, I feel like I still would recommend this because this had a lot of elements I loved. Would not recommend The Stolen Air. I did not like that book. Sorry, Holly Black, I love you. But that was not the one for me. And then the biggest surprise is probably, did I grab it? I might have actually forgot. I know I did. Is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by, I think I said Gillian. I accidentally said Gillian last time, which I thought was silly but I think it's Jillian. Jillian McAllister. I don't know when I talked about this book last, actually. Maybe it was in a TikTok. I don't remember. It's okay. This was a huge surprise for me. I, this is like my first, maybe, no, it's not my first. One of, I'm trying to get more into thrillers and thrillers aren't generally very stand out to me. Uh, like they're just kind of like a fun time. But this was amazing. I give this five stars. I It's about this woman who um, sees her son, like, kill someone. Uh, and then the she goes to bed that night and wakes up the next day. And it's the day before her son killed someone. And, the, like, she's going back in time. And she's trying to figure out, like, how this happened. And I ate this up. I loved, like, the time travel gimmick or whatever. But I also loved, I found that I really enjoy thrillers with a focus on family but only if it's like a good family unit like I, I don't think I like it when everybody's mean to each other and like husbands and wives are like having marital issues and fighting with each other or not I mean there's like marital issues in this but it's like you can tell that they love each other if that makes sense and I really enjoyed that I I just I want to reread it like kind of knowing everything it was so good I loved it highly recommend she has another book coming out this year that I guess I could say is one of my most anticipated it's just another missing person. You can't really see that. No idea what it's about, but I probably will pick it up because I really like this. Okay, we have a few more questions. Favorite new author is absolutely... Uh, I don't know how to say their name. So I'm going to say XJZ, who wrote The Iron Widow, which, listen, I know I've only read one book, one book by them, 
but they are definitely a new favorite author. I love their personality. I follow them now on Instagram and TikTok, and they are so funny, and I'm going to read everything they ever write from now on, including the sequel to this when it comes out next year, and I want to read their middle grade book. I just, Iron Widow was another five-star read. I, I, this could also be another su a surprise as well. Oh, I think I accidentally skipped that question. Oh, no, no, I didn't. I said wrong place, wrong time. I'm, okay, I'm going crazy. I need to go to bed or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, this was also a surprise because I did not think I was going to like this book. I don't really like mecha anime, and that's what I heard this compared to. But honestly, like, I didn't even, even care about the mecha battles. I was all in for these characters. I love Lee Shimin. I would kill people for that man. I loved him so much. Um... Anyway, I'm so pumped for the sequel. I've already pre-ordered it. So sad it comes out literally months from now. So many months away, but I'm so excited. And I, the next question is a book that made you cry. And I don't really have a book. Like, I don't think, I was looking at all the books I've read this year. I've read like 55 books, I think, at this point in the year. And I don't think any of them have made me cry, which... It's funny because I feel like I cry pretty easily. Like, I'll watch a TikTok. I literally watched a TikTok this morning about a man pushing his son who has cerebral palsy in a marathon. Like, he pushed him in, like, a wheelchair and, like, ran a marathon. And I, like, sobbed for 20 minutes. That is not even an exaggeration. But for books, it's a little bit harder to get me to cry. Um, so I'm just going to say the book that made me the most emotional was Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. I don't know how I've ever read this. I don't know, because Everest fascinates me, one. And two, this is, like, uber, uber famous. I read it at the beginning of the year, and literally, oof. Like, ugh. reading this was hard. I mean, it was such a good book, but it is just devastating. It's, like it says, it's a personal account of the, I think it's the 97 Everest disaster. Basically, like, more people died you know, like, a few days then, or, or that season on Everest than, like, ever before because of, like, there was just so many people and, like, there was this bad storm. 1996. And I'm a dum-dum because I thought this was just John Krakauer, like, talking about the disaster. But, no, he was there when it happened, which just blew my mind. And, yeah, if you haven't read this, read it. It was, I think John Krakauer kind of has a high opinion of himself. But if you kind of overlook that, um, it's such a good book. This was a five-star read for me, which I don't give a lot of nonfiction five stars, but this was definitely five stars. I loved it. And it made me very emotional. So a book that made me happy. Um, this is kind of a weird answer, but I put Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus because even though there's a lot of like bad things happening in this book, this is I've, this is like the book of last year, by the way. So I feel like everybody knows what this is, but Essentially, it's about this woman in the 1950s. She's a single mother, and she makes, like, this cooking show, and she's a scientist. And even though there's a lot of hardship for her, I don't know. I just, I really liked that the book wasn't, like, it wasn't just about her down on her luck, the whole book, I guess. Like, there was a lot of positivity uh, within the book. A lot of people who were on her side, who wanted to help her, who was who were rooting for her. And I just came away with the book with this, like, very positive reading experience. It was, like, a four-star read for me, but it was very happy. I don't know. And I haven't read a lot of romance this year, which is what I feel like would normally be in this slot. I mean, hell, that made me happy, but for different reasons. <laughs> just because I was so happy it lived up to my expectations. But anyway. Then question number 10 is the most beautiful cover and I, f I think this is like that you've bought this year. And I try very hard not to buy a lot of books. I've been trying especially hard this year because I'm trying to um, read the books I already own. And I also get overwhelmed. Like I can't have too many books on my TBR, TBR or I will explode. But uh, the, I just picked out of all the books I bought this year what I think has the prettiest cover. Because I couldn't like, I don't know, I couldn't, I was having trouble. So, I picked two, actually. I bought The Marvelous Light by Freya Marks, Marsk, um, which is, like, 
about wizards, like gay wizards, and I was like, hell yeah, sign me up. And I think the hardcover one is prettier, but the paperback is pretty, pretty as well. I really like this cover. And then, I don't know if y'all have heard of this webcomic called Ava's Demon. I read it a long time ago, like when I was in high school. It's still ongoing, and I learned very recently that the author, like, released a physical book, like, that you can buy from Barnes & Noble, which is so neat. I don't, I mean, it's book one, so I don't think this is all of it. And I've already read all of this, but I've forgotten most of it. So I was in the middle of a reread. But like, this is a really dope cover. And the art is just like, it's so well made. I was surprised, like, this is only like 20 bucks or something. And how well this is put together. Astounding. So I just got this like a couple days ago. So that's a beautiful cover. And then the last question is books I still need to read. So, folks, I, folks like Chris Connor, I always do that in my head. I had a goal this year to catch up on all my Brandon Sanderson and Rick Riordan. And my goal was to just catch up on everything I've been behind on. And I've done pretty well so far. Uh, Brandon Sanderson is very hard because the man is crazy and he's written so many books. But my, and I'm not trying to catch up on all of his stuff by the end of the year because that's a lot. But so far... I've read the third Wax and Wayne book, and I read Legion, which is kind of like a standalone collection of short stories he wrote. And my goals for the end of the year are, I'm reading Oathbreaker, Bringer, sorry, I always call it Oathbra Oathbreaker, Oathbringer, and <laughs> listening to this on audio, I've already had to renew it once. This is like 360 pages in. <laughs> I've listened to a lot of it. I put this off for years. I think I read the second book in 2020. But, and this is definitely my least favorite one so far. Kaladin is my favorite character in the series. And he's like barely been in it. And it's all about fucking Dalinar. And Dalinar is boring. But still great. I'm glad I'm finally committing to reading this one. But this will be, this will be the longest book I've ever read. When I finish this. So this will be a feat. So once I, when I finish that, I'm going to read The Lost Metal, which is the last book in the Wax and Wayne series. I, I was going to go straight into this, but I heard it's kind of cosmere which means there's a lot of, like, references to a lot of his other books, especially Stormlight Archives. And it might not even matter because all the references could be in book four, but I want to finish the series because I've heard this is so good. So I'm really excited to finish this series. I love Wax and Wayne and Steris, who is his wife. I think they get married in the third book. Then I also want to read of Brandon's. I want to read Cytonic, which is the third book in his young adult sci-fi series about space and like humans fighting aliens and um, ships that talk. It's such a fun series. I've forgotten everything that happened in books one and two. I'll have to read a, like, like a little plot summary. But the fourth book comes at the end of the year. So I want to read this this year. And I bought this like on release. So I should be ashamed of myself. But yeah, I've heard this is kind of a filler book. And it's not as good as the other two. But I still want to read it. And then I also want to read Tress of the Emerald Sea. I actually started it. I'm like 30 pages in or something. Uh, this is one of the secret novels he released. The second one is also out. I'm a fool and didn't get the special ones, but I did buy like the regular normal one, which isn't that different, so it's okay. And the end papers are still really pretty and the art is still in it. So is it really that different? And plus the second one came out and I've heard it's not as good. So I'm kind of glad I didn't get it, but I've heard this one's really good. So I'm very excited. And this one is in the Cosmere which cool so that's all the brandon i want to read i don't know where oh i put it over here lots of brandon so if i read like i'm determined to read these four and if i do that i will be so satisfied i'll be so pleased and proud of myself and then as for rick i want to read the last charles of apollo book uh, that's like my main, oh no, actually, no, just kidding, I forgot. So my goal, I also want to read 
the Red Pyramid, not Red Pyramid, the Kane Chronicles trilogy because I read books one and two as a kid and never finished. So I need to reread the first two and read the third one and finally finish that. So that's my main goal for Rick this year. And then also to finish Trials of Apollo and then I can move on to the new stuff that he released this year. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for this one, but I'm forcing myself to read the Egyptian ones first because I want to save this one for last. And okay, I think, I think that's it. I think I made it through all of the questions. Yeah, so I'm going to go put these all away and go to bed. Okay, good night.